Good morning, friends. Uh, it's Sandra. I am the pastor at Cook's United Methodist Church, and I am not in my favorite place uh, to be when I'm thinking about um, God's love. Um, I am waiting for a haircut, so I apologize for um, the crazy uh, scenery here. Um, I, uh, I, I'm beyond excited, and so I'm trying to tamp myself down here. I'm beyond excited about these verses. They mean so much to me. And, uh, and I've discovered in the last uh, 48 hours prepping for today, I've discovered some things that I really hadn't thought about uh, before. Uh, and um, I, so let's just get with it. So I, before I read the scripture, let me tell you this. I do have this kind of niggling sense of um, Popeye the Sailor Man when I read this when I read these verses. Uh, and for those of you who are too young to remember Popeye, let me just remind us all, uh, when he would come to the end of himself, when he didn't have enough strength, then he could always find that magic in spinach and then would rush in and save the day or olive oil particularly. Um, and so this is so, uh, Papa is so like what you and I often do. We wait until we get to the end of ourselves to cry out for the strength uh, and the stamina that God promises us uh, by the power of his spirit. Uh, but there is another way, and that's what these verses are about. And so let's, uh, Papa was pretty amazing but got nothing on uh, the Spirit. So let's dig in. Uh, so from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the, these are, it's the, this is the end of the 29th verse, and then verses 30 and 31. My guess is that they are written in some form on your heart. But let's listen for God's encouragement for us today. His understanding is beyond human reach. He gives power to the tired and revives the exhausted. Youths will become tired and weary. Young men will certainly stumble. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will fly up on wings like eagles. They will run and not be tired. And they will walk and not be weary. This is God's sweet promise for God's people. Thanks be to God. I, I don't know about you, but my guess is we're all in the same boat. And that is we get tired often. We get tired and weary and worn, exhausted. And so we, we think about this from the Popeye perspective in that we know that God will always come to our rescue that there will always be an additional strength. But, but I think there's even more than that here. So let me uh, begin um, with us um, squeezing all we can out of these verses by uh, sharing a Bob Goff quote. If you've not read any of Bob Goff's work, I encourage you to do that. Uh, but I read this quote uh, several weeks ago, and, uh, and it's still kind of hanging with me because it's a duh moment. Uh, for us, but it's also great comfort. He said, we shouldn't be surprised when we don't understand what a God who says he surpasses all understanding is doing. Uh, did you get that at the very beginning of the passage? His understanding is beyond human reach. And so uh, it's not just that God will come to us when we need the extra strength. There is something else for us here. And so uh, let, let's kind of dig through why this is so um, important for us. I, I think it um, it it begins kind of in the middle of the passage. Even the ones we expect don't tire so easily. Uh, the young folk, uh, the energi energizer bunnies of our experience, even they stumble 
and they run out of juice. They don't have all that they need. They're not all they can be or want to be. And so God is promising something else. Uh, I also want to share uh, with you uh, this. There is one word in this that I think describes um, our pathway with Jesus to a T, no matter what our circumstances, and that is the word but. It turns on a dime there. D did you hear how Isaiah begins to talk about um, how God comes to us, even young folk and, and people who got tons more energy than me are going to stumble and fall. But, but there is another way. It's not just uh, spinach for Popeye. It's not just, um, yeah, it's not just uh, uh, running in to rescue us. Uh, it there is something else at work here. And so I want you to hear these promises. When you and I hope in the Lord, uh, what we mean there uh, and the Hebrew is about confident, uh, eager, and patient watching. We know that God is working. We know that God is present. And so we will trust in God's timing. We're not gonna wear ourselves out trying to make things work, we know God has something for us. And so we will wait on God. So those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. That's one translation. Renew is not just uh, like hitting the refresh button uh, on the page that we're looking at. It, it's a strength and a power that's beyond just filling up our tank. It's a change for the better. It's like moving from um, regular gas to high octane, as my granddaddy uh, used to refer to it. Uh, there is something new. There is a there there is uh, a completely different perspective. And opportunity that's coming to those who trust in God and wait on him uh, and so the strength of my the strength that's promised there is not just physical power like Popeye looks for it's not just uh, mental recharging to kind of get us back on track but that strength is a strength of mind and spirit that comes back um, to those who have spent theirs. It, it is a life that comes back to the spirit. And we were all created with a particular kind of spirit. Uh, 2 Timothy 1.7, y'all know that's my favorite verse, um, that God did not give us a spirit of fear or timidity, but one of power and love and self-discipline. Power is not just gutting it out. It's about knowing that God somehow um, gives us a power we could not have on our own. And not just when, we, um, when ours expires, but from the very beginning. Okay, so this is what I've been hanging on to and I can't hardly wait for. I, I got curious about why... Um, W that you would fly up on the wings of eagles, a except that they are probably one of the most uh, regal, uh, Im that's a, a regal image, one of the most regal you could ever find in scripture. Um, but but as a metaphor, if, I if Isaiah is using that as a picture of what you and I, um, uh, if it's a picture of what you and I are already why eagle and why not why not something else because we we really are uh, more than we think we are but we are also not as much as we think we are and so here's what I learned about eagles you ready um, eagles do not flock with other birds and there are several reasons why. They, they don't flock with other birds because other birds can't and won't do what they do. Now, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that the spiritual um, parallel here is that you and I shouldn't hang with anybody that's different with us. 
the flocking together is about finding uh, comfort and support, encouragement, and uh, being with those who help us become our best. And so to hang with those who are not like us, don't have the same experiences, don't tap into the same power is not a threat for us. It doesn't stop our eagleness, I don't believe. Uh, but we do have to flock with those who will push us and help us remember whose we are and to keep developing what it is that God has made possible for us. The second thing I would tell you is that they have a very keen vision and an uncanny focus. For instance, an eagle in flight can detect another eagle in flight up to 50 miles away. 50 miles they recognize one another because they flock together they recognize in this almost instantaneous thing I know that behavior I, I know what that cat's doing I, I that inspires me that encourages me that's a reflection of me and so their focus and their uh, their ability to see through things and to recognize what's in front of them uh, I think it's a great picture of what is possible for us, how God intended for us to be. The third thing, they can fly to an altitude and in an altitude of 10,000 feet. No other bird can do that. Can you imagine being able to fly at 10,000? To be at, not just to experience flight, not just to be able to get from one place to another with that kind of possibility. Um, but to be able to do so in effect to make your life um, abundant, to be able to serve your family, yada, yada, yada. But you can do that at 10,000, but you stay at 05 most of the time. Now that's the trap for most of us. We don't realize what's possible. We stay where it's comfortable and we stay with what we know. Uh, let's maybe the challenge for you is to uh, develop your own belief in your eagleness and uh, and fly a little higher. Uh, number four, what I learned is that eagles are unafraid of storms. As a matter of fact, instead of hunkering down and trying to find protection until the wind stops blowing and the rain stops pelting them, they will fly into a storm. And they will use the wind created by that phenomenon to help them work smarter, not harder, so that they can uh, accomplish the same height in a flight. They are unafraid of the outside threat because they know what is possible. God made that possible for them. Uh, and so... I think the challenge for us is to consider how we often let our fear, which is not of God, matter of fact, it works against um, the agape love that God has for us when we're afraid. It's be, it's, we, we question whether he'll love us enough to sustain us. Number five, this is the one that I think the church, hey, 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 church, I think we need to be paying attention to. At about 30 years of age, an, uh, an eagle begins to notice this. Their feathers are thinning out because they're worn. Uh, and when their feathers are worn, it works their muscles in a different way. And so they, their strength wanes much more quickly and they are not as healthy as they could be. So get this. An eagle who recognizes what's going on with themselves will pull out their old worn feathers and they will even knock off their own beak because it's not as effective in being able to access food or to um, process food. They'll knock off their own beak and pull out their old worn feathers that don't do for them what they need for them to do and they retire. That's the word that's been used in all of the studies I did some research on. They retire to themselves. They take a Sabbath, a long sabbatical, 
until those new things come in. New feathers grow back, a new beak grows back. God made it possible for that to happen. And when those things happen, do you know that that gets them, that earns them, that makes it possible for them to know up to 30 more years of life? They extend their life by caring for themselves and trusting that what God has set in motion um, in the natural order of who they are, that it will come to pass that greater life will be possible than just trying to fly around with saddle feathers and having to eat softer food. Now church, the spiritual lessons there about how we care for ourselves, uh, how we relate to one another, I think are powerful. And uh, I could go on for days, but that's not fair. It will also help me lose my place in line for a haircut. But I do think that the challenge for us today is to not just say, I know God will give me a break when I need a break. That's not what Isaiah intended. Isaiah intended that we understand God has for us a different kind of power and from the get-go. My prayer for all of us today, for all of those who know and live by the name and power of Jesus the Christ, my prayer for us today is that we would be, um, uh, that we would be ready uh, to care for ourselves and to live into who God intended us to be. May you and I both know the power of God within us this very day that we would mount up with wings like eagles, that we would run and not grow weary, that we would not, oh, that we would walk, that we would carry on this pathway with Jesus and not be exhausted. May God bless us all in how we use this day he's given us today. Let's pray together. Lord, I am so grateful for the pictures that you've drawn for us today um, to help us understand who and whose we are and all the promises that you have for us. Forgive us for small living, Lord, and for taking the easy way out. Um, we uh, confess that we often uh, want to be Popeye instead of an eagle. And so we ask, Lord, that you would show us today in very tender ways how we are exchanging your glory and your blessing that you promise fully for um, a lesser way of doing and being. Help us to see ourselves in the way you see us with the capacity, Lord, to soar, to unknown heights to encourage one another to see clearly and to know when to rest in you you have given us such love and we know there is more to come forgive us lord when we question it and uh, wonder if it will be enough we thank you lord for the way that you have blessed us with a new day so help us to soar today and to have confidence um, in all that you are, for you are present with us always. We love you so much and are grateful for this gift. In the name of Christ, we say thanks. Amen. Love you much. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. There's even more good news tomorrow. It's Friday. And uh, think of our graduates. Think today of those who are moving into a new season in their life. We got one friend who started a new job today, and we're so excited for you, Hoss. Uh, have a great day, my friends. We'll talk soon. Bye.